since the 2019 elections, the People's Democratic Party, PDP, through judicial pronouncements and defections, has been hemorrhaging governors and legislators at a worrying rate. In a space of seven months, it has lost three governors and other party members who have jumped ship to join the ruling All Progressive Congress, APC. Not only has this raised questions about the capacity of the PDP to provide credible opposition politics to the APC, it also raises fears that Nigeria could turn into a one-party state. It is apparent that the onus is on the main opposition party to rethink its strategy on how to keep the country's fickle politicians within its ranks. To discuss the remote and immediate causes of the defections and how the PDP intends to stem the decisions ahead of the 2023 elections. We will now be joined from Port Harcourt by the River State Governor, Ian Som Wike. Good morning, Governor Wike, and welcome to The Morning Show. Thank you, Ruben Abate. Thank you. <laughs> Your Excellency, long time. It's good to see you again. Well, <laughs> 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 yes, I, I know you are very busy, <laughs> no problem. But very quickly, in March <laughs> or thereabouts, you said whatever problem is in the PDP uh, is no more than malaria. But that in the uh, APC, uh, that what they have in the APC is uh, cancer. Uh, but despite that uh, description, uh, it looks like members of the PDP uh, prefer to go and uh, get cancer and stay with uh, malaria. Uh, what do you think is responsible for this? Because the gale of defections uh, is quite alarming and is continuing. Well, uh, Ruben, let me thank you very much for the opportunity at least once more to interface with you after uh, <laughs> when we left the Federal Council and I became governor in 2015. I I met you for maybe a few days, and then thereafter we lost uh, touch. But thank you for the new job you are doing, and I want to commend you that you are doing a great uh, job. Now, straight to the point, uh, you, you talked about, uh, I said that what we have in PDP is malaria, and what we have in APC is cancer. And what do I mean by that? Uh, whether anybody likes it or not, uh, the problem in PDP, whether anybody agrees or not, is a problem that I don't want to even say a serious problem. And so that's why I talk about uh, being having a uh, malaria. Uh, yes, you, you may see people defecting to APC. That does not in itself mean that the sickness in, uh, in, in, in APC have been taken uh, uh, away. The, the APC is the ruling party. Whether you know that it's the ruling party. And by the time you see explosion or inflation, as you may call it, then you will understand uh, the point I'm making. Uh, so many people will defect for one reason or the other. And uh, unfortunately, uh, from all those who have defected, nobody has given you any cogent or tenable reason you can believe why they are defecting. If you tell me today, I mean, you said, like you said, three governors have defected. What are their reasons? <laughs> what are their reasons? Uh, oh my, he left. What did he say? Are they left? What did he say? Matter what they just left. <laughs> what did he say? So uh, there are different reasons why people leave. And with all due respect, and they are all my colleagues as governors, with due respect, nobody has given any tangible reason why they are leaving. Nobody. If any, if you can pinpoint what one person has said, the problem in PDP why I'm leaving, then I will be able to say, look, yes, he's right. No, it's not right. If you if it's okay, Omai said this, why he's leaving? And then I'll be able to respond to say, look, what did he say? He said this. Now you put the facts on land. What is it? Can it be tenable? Can it be justified? Certainly not. What did I they say that he left? Why he left uh, uh, PDP to APC? I mean, we're all Nigerians, we're all human beings. It is not because somebody comes up and say, I'm leaving. What is the reason why you are leaving? Nobody has said anything tangible. If you wanted to take from what Omari said, he said he's leaving because the Igbos are not protected. The Southeast are not protected under PDP. And how would you say the Southeast are not protected under PDP? Since 1999, when PDP formed government, to 2015, when we left the government. Look at the area of Igbo men, of people of the Southeast, who occupy government positions. 
What is protection you are talking about? What is protection? Now, I don't said he left. Based on what I read, and based on what I had him say, not possibly whatever other reasons he may not have told us. I didn't want to comment on this, but now you have asked me this reason. Why did he leave? Based on what he said, look, he left because Cross River is a poor state, and therefore he wants to join the ruling party. He wants to join Buhari to move the country forward. He was elected in 2015. Now he's six years in government. He's rounding up government. Buhari and the president is also rounding up. All of us who are second time governors and the president who are rounding up. Now he does not know that like, Cross River State having a poor state. He did not know that you ought to have joined Mr. Buhari since 2015 to make sure that Cross River State is at par with other states like you talk about a quiet bomb the rest of it. Now that the president is rounding up, you are not saying is it now you are joining the president's party to move Cross River State forward. Six years ago, you didn't know that. I mean, who are you talking to? Who are you talking to? The governor of Zanfara, what was the reason he gave? I didn't know. But if, when we met him, and I mean, I'm surprised, when he met him, and he, he, he gave me, in fact, I've never taken such a risk in my life, flying down to Sokoto with my colleagues, and driving by a road, no, but very bad road, from Sokoto to Zanfara, bad road. And of course, the, the issue of insecurity, for three hours, he went and and saw your colleague, and you met with your colleague. And your colleague, I mean, he can't even understand what your colleague was saying. Mr. Awuke, I'm angry with you because you went to Benway, you defended Benway State. But me, you're not defending me. <laughs> what is that to do with the party? Is that the reason why you should leave the party? But normally, I should not comment on this. But why are you commenting about the issue of Metawoli? You know very well that PDP lost that election. If Medawala has gone to court to challenge that he will read out of the election and then regain his mandate and then have decided to move, of course I will not have a problem with that. But this is a party that lost election. Based on technicality, PDP went to court to say that the, the ABC did not fulfill the electoral uh, acts provision. They did not comply with the provisions of the electoral act. And I've got annexed there was no primary. And under the electoral act, every party, every party must conduct primaries. Whether by direct primaries or indirect primaries. And that next to the pain, I'm sure, I'm sure. You can imagine when INEC would have come out I gave the ruling party to say they did not conduct primary. And you saw the altercation between then Governor Yari and the former chairman of APC, Oshomole. If you, if, in fact, if you watch that video very well, even when Yari was speaking, when, when he spoke, he even spoke in Hausa to tell you the, level, the anger. Let, uh, let Oshomole come back and conduct primary. If you watch that video very, very well. Now, one that the party went to court, and Supreme Court said, look, you did not comply with the provisions of the electoral act, and therefore, there's no way you could have said you, could, you participated in the election, and therefore, PDP won the election. And who was the candidate of PDP? All right. From my, my brother, Emmett And that's where we are. And the same person now comes to say, oh, I've left the party. It is, there are things you cannot reconcile. Hmm. All right. Uh, th thank you so much uh, for that insight, uh, Governor Wiki. Real quickly, I'd like to ask you, a lot of people have said there's a silent implosion happening in the PDP because, yeah, you can say what is happening in the PDP is malaria, but a lot of people are saying it's cancerous, really, when you look at it deeply. Why? Because the PDP have been looking for ways to quell different fights. You know, like the Shei Makinde uh, fight with uh, uh, the former governor of Ekiti State, Ayofayoshi. So there's been lots of fight here and there that the PDP 
has been trying to quell. And a lot of people are looking and saying, this party is imploding. And that's why the governors are leaving. And you're not only losing governors, you are losing senators. You know, in the space of a week, you've lost close to three senators and House of Rep members. And yeah, yeah. It, it puts you in a position not to compete effectively in 2023. And, yeah. And, yeah. and the yeah. primary is too in Anambra that you guys had to resolve quickly. And this was the same party that Vincent Ogula for boasted that will rule Nigeria for the next 60 years. So a lot of people are saying the PDP has failed. Yeah. I don't agree with you. I don't agree with you. Uh, uh, let me say clearly, there's nowhere in politicking you can say you will not have different opinions. The mere fact that Shei Makende, the governor of your state, disagreed with the former governor of the state, I fire Shei, don't, don't mean there's an implosion in the party. You cannot have a party where you just come up, everybody believes in the same thing. It's not possible. It's not possible. But what is important, when they had that uh, difference, were they able to move forward? Was there an election to conduct the South Western Congress? Yes. Yes. So that arrested the case. The difference between Shei and the governor of your state and I of your state, the former governor of the state, has to do with, look, what do you think should be done in the Southwest. His first chef's own thinking may not be in tandem with Shea's own thinking. But at the end of the day, all of them came as okay, let's do the election. The election was conducted. You saw when Fire Shea went and uh, 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 congratulated and held uh, uh, Shea to say, look, you are my leader. And that's in, in this, but that also, Assuming, assuming there's any difference. Is that the reason any politician who is saying he committed to the beliefs of the PDP or whatever will not say, I'm leaving the party? As I speak to you today, as I speak to you today, as a governor of the state, you cannot say there are things that PDP have not done that is against the interests of my state. But, but why would I leave the party? You have to be inside the party and discuss the issues and fight it. And that's what's called mature and those who are conscious, not flimsy excuses. Flimsy excuses. Okay, I, I can just wake up in the morning and say, you know, um, the way NWC is behaving, I'm leaving the party. I mean, what kind of excuse is that? NWC, they are not your children. You need to agree to disagree. You disagree. Agree in politics, so it's not anything that comes as oh, I'm angry and therefore I'm leaving uh, the party. Nobody does that, nobody does that. The way we also say so in APC, in APC, I don't have any disagreements. People are leaving for extremely excuses that have no basis. People are leaving because, as a ruling party, to cover up your inadequacies, people are afraid. Look, let me go to the ruling party so I will be protected. And my, my, my question has always been, protection for what? What protection are you looking for as a governor? The day President Buhari is leaving office, is the day I'm leaving office. And if you even say that, which of the governors in this state can say that they have been intimidated the way the state government has been intimidated? Who to the government, who to the government in this country, they have faced the kind of election as a governor of a state that I face. Why would I not, based on those kind of intimidations and the things that happen, to now say, look, let me go to APC and seek for protection. You are aware in 2015 what happened? There was nothing the ruling party did not do to remove me from office. Nothing. Nothing. That alone, how to survive that? That alone would have made me to say, okay, look, I don't want further problems. Let me go and see how I can see protection. But as a man who has conscience, as a man who believes that this, even the, the, where you want to get protection, there's no protection. They're merely, they're merely trying to worry you and expose you at the end of the day. In 2019, look at what happened in the state. Look at the, the, the military, look at the, uh, the federal might 
and I came down on River State. What happened? The people stood. I said, no. That alone would have also made me to say, okay, let me go and see for protection. People should be man enough to say, look, I'm the governor of the state, and I cannot, for whatever it is, to deny my people. If you APC asks me today, come over to uh, APC, I will ask them question. Yes, what am I coming to do? What is there for my people? What is there for my people? What do you think you want to give to the people of River State that will make me change? What is there? What are the appointments you are going to give? Oh, you just want to take me to Mr. President and have a handshake. But now that's a governor, can't I go and see Mr. President have a handshake? Do I need anybody to take me to Mr. President to have a handshake with Mr. President? Can't I leave River State today and call the protocol? I want to see Mr. President. I want to talk with Mr. President. And I go there and have a handshake with the president. And I come down, I enter the press gallery, and then I address the, uh, the press. People should do things that people will say, look, yes, you are mature enough. You are qualified to occupy social position. If you can tell me here, what is the reason which you have not told me? Tell me. From Eboi, down to Cross River, down to Zamfara, what are the reasons they have given? If you tell me that, then I begin to say, yes, they are right. I didn't know that PDP had this kind of problem. I underrated the problem that PDP had. But in this case, you have not told anybody anything. So how would you not say PDP has a problem? That the matter of fact, I'm afraid that I'll be prosecuted. Is that a problem for PDP? If the federal government is haunting you, is that a problem of PDP? Have I not been haunted severely? Oh, let us tell Nigerians the simple truth. To be a governor is not just being elected alone. There are problems you must face. Looking at our political process, looking at our experiences in politics in this country, you know that what the opposition faces in most cases. And you must have to. You must have to. So I have not seen any reason any of the defectors have given. You now talk about senators. I agree with you. The problem here is this. Management has nothing to do with PDP. If as a governor of my state, River State, I have problem with my senators, that is not a problem of the party. The only thing you can tell me, the capacity and the ability of the party leadership to weigh in into that problem. If you say so, yes, I can agree with you. That yes, the party may not have done well to weigh into the problem between senators and some of the um, between the senators and their governors. There's no dispute about that. I, 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 as a governor, have had some disagreement with my senators, of course. We are all human. We are all human. You cannot tell me that you must agree in all cases. It is, not, it is not possible. In politics, there are people who have interests, who have different objectives. It is your capacity and ability to sit down with everybody to say, look, I agree with you on this. But why not look at it this way? I agree with that. But the point again remains. You are leaving PDP. Take, for example, now. The time they left PDP. So what is that to do with the governors? I mean, with well, the, uh, the senators? What is it that they giving? Yes, thank weekend. you very much. Yeah, okay. Yes. I, I, I would like to ask. The uh, PDP has uh, insisted that it will go to court. Uh, over Governor Matawale's uh, defection uh, for reasons which you already outlined about uh, the Supreme Court judgment and all of that. Uh, but we'll, we'll recall that when uh, the Ebony State Governor defected to the APC, the PDP did not go to court. When Professor Ayade defected to the uh, PDP, uh, to the APC, uh, the PDP did not go to court. Why is it, what makes this uh, Matawale case so special? Uh, does the party not run the risk of being accused of uh, going to court just because it's a northerner that is involved? That's one leg of the question. No, no, the I, second leg. I'm there, there's speaking, a second leg. I'm not speaking, yes, yes, I'm yes, not yes. speaking for it. Uh, you no, know, there's a I'm second leg. Okay. The second leg is what is the PDP doing to protect the deputy governor, Madi Ali Uguso, who has said that, no, on the basis of principles, he is not leaving the party. So he remains as deputy governor, and we may have in uh, Zamfara State 
an APC governor and a PDP uh, deputy governor. Uh, what would the party do to protect uh, the deputy governor of Sampara State and ensure that, one, he does not defect and no attempt is made to impeach him? Yeah, uh, let me take the first leg of that question, and uh, which you add that, well, uh, Omani left, and uh, what did the party do? They did not go to court. Uh, I had left, uh, what did the party do? They did not go to court. And why now that Metawile had left, and uh, then they are not uh, issuing threat of going to court? With all due respect, I'm not speaking on behalf of the leadership of the party, which in this case is an NWC. I'm not the spokesperson of the party, uh, but from my own knowledge, if you ask me, from my own knowledge, my, I, I may be wrong. I, I may be wrong. But I, uh, what I'm thinking that in the case of Metawele, Metawele was not the one who went to court. It was PDP that went to court. That is my thinking. I may be wrong. I may be wrong. Remember, Metawele did not go to court to say my election was rigged. Uh, I won the election. And therefore, the court should declare him. No, it's not in that case. If he did, that was not how he came into office. But in this case, PDP went to court to say, look, he did not comply with the provisions of the Electoral Act, and therefore, he had no candidate. And if that is the case, therefore, PDP is right to say, we are going to court. I am not saying that may be the reason, because what I'm speaking, what I'm saying today is based on my own idea and what I think. Not because when the party has met, or when I mean the party has met, the leadership of the party have not called a meeting for everybody to look at it and discuss. But this is my own private uh, idea, thinking that this is maybe reducing the PDP saying they are going to court. So that is what I think. Okay. Then the yeah. and if you can ask, if you can tell the second leg again, so that I no, don't, I was uh, asking you mistake. about uh, Madi Ali Uguso, the deputy governor. Okay. In uh, Zamfara. Uh, who, who, uh, yes, that's it. What? What? It, well, it is clear that the deputy governor had not resigned. Remember, when Atiku uh, Abubakar uh, uh, was the vice president of. Uh, uh, to uh, uh, Basinger, and he joined the ASEAN and the PDP tried to see that uh, he did not sit and the court came out no, he's, he's wrong he's a vice president, he's not a vice president of any particular party and therefore you cannot based on that to remove him and so the same thing will apply here that uh, uh, they cannot based on the fact that the deputy governor did not join Metawale to, 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 to APC, and therefore he... But I do know that he may start up internal process of using the state assembly to uh, impeach him. But that, again, is where the leadership of the party uh, can be called to question. What is the plan of the party? I am not the party. I am a member of the party. If the party tomorrow calls a meeting and then say, look, now that the deputy governor is there, what do we do? And then we'll be able to profile solution. But I believe, I believe the chairman of the PDP Governors Forum will have with the leadership of the party, which is for now NWC, to say, look, what do we do to protect? Can we seek the views of other people, of other of our members, governors, senators, as the case may be, if they wish to do that? then we'll be able to say, look, we must have to take this case as a one case that people will have to know that enough is enough of what is going on in this country. We must have to protect the deputy governor. How do we protect him? We must give him all the necessary support it requires. Mind you, too, I do not believe in many sense, too. I believe that when we say it, we must also show that commitment we want also show that seriousness to protect the deputy governor. The only thing they can do to remove the deputy governor is by the impeachment process. And of course, uh, you know, so many people can do all kinds of things. The court has, in several cases, said, look, if the procedure and the processes are not complied with, whatever you have done will be set uh, aside. So I'm not afraid of that. 
but we know that PDP will give him the necessary support. Well, uh, Governor Wike, let's take a short break, uh, and then when we return, uh, the conversation will continue. Please stay with us. We still have a lot more to discuss with you. We'll be right back. Right, welcome back to the morning show right here on the Rise News Channel. We'll be joined by Governor of River State, uh, Governor Yusum Wike. Uh, Governor Wike, thank you so much for joining us. Real quickly, you said we should keep giving you a reasons why these people are defecting. Let me give you one reason. We can argue or debate this out. They say zoning. They say the reason they are defecting is because there's no zoning arrangement for the Southeast or the South South. And that brings me to the question. Has the PDP finally been able to dis determine its zoning area? Because, you see, there was a statement made by the top echelon of the PDP that caused all of this brohaha by saying that they are very open on zoning, that they've not zoned it to anywhere. I mean, the presidency in 2023. And that got a lot of people irate. So, you know, some of these governors, they say, you know what? The Southeast is supposed to be in top contention. But the PDP has not said anything about it. So I'm giving you a reason, governor, now. Zoning might be the reason. What do you think? Well, I, I think, I think uh, that is not correct. If the person says that he left the party because of zoning, where has the APC where he went to zone it now? So if, if, if the APC has zoned it to the Southeast or the South, then that reason is uh, tenable. But in this case, you said I have no zone. Let me accept, though not considering as correct, let us assume it is right, but not, not consider to it. Now, you are moving to B, and B has not come out to say we have zone to this. So what is the reason? Can you say such a reason, if ever, can be justified? Certainly not. That is not the reason. If APC has shown the presidency today to the South, then the mind is justifiable. The reason he gave can be justified because at the end of the day, you see, you see what I said, why I left PDP, why I've gone to APC, it's because APC has shown it to where I said it was shown to. But hmm? is that correct? That is a, that is a Omahi. Precisely. That's what Omahi said. He said, I'm leaving APC because they have not been fair to Ndibo. They have not been fair to the Southeast. And we have chronicled a government that has not been fair to a region. How do we say that government has not been uh, fair? In terms of appointment. And if it's in terms of appointment, look at the time when PDP took over power, down to 2015 when they left power. Look at appointments in the Southeast. Can you compare the same appointment in the Southeast as the same thing today in APC in terms of appointment? Who would have felt better in terms of appointment, taking care of Ndibo, taking care of the Southeast, as he said? If so, that they've not done a... a, 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 a Niger Bridge. Where did we come to with Niger Bridge? Who? Who awarded the contract? Who constructed it of Niger Bridge? It was under the PDP administration, right? And we left office in 2015. This is six years now in this government. Has it been completed? Who told him that this PDP was in power in 2015 that would have not have completed that Niger Bridge? What are we talking about? What are we talking about? I have told everybody who cares what makes you a man is to be able to tell your people the simple truth. I'm leaving PDP today to APC because, one, PDP has not done anything for the South South. PDP has not done anything for the South South. PDP has not done this for my people. And I'll catalog them. And then now that I'm going to APC. I'm leaving PDP to APC. See the reasons why I'm leaving PDP to join you. Tell me, are you willing to do all these things that PDP didn't do for me? What I mean for me, for my people, are you willing to do them? Yes, I'm willing to do them. 
Can you announce it to the public? Let them hear that this is why I'm leaving PDP. Because you say you will do this. Announce it to my people. If that is the case, then when I'm leaving PDP, you will see the senators will go with me. The House of Reps will go with me. The Assembly will go with me. Because it's for the interest of the state. It is for the interest of the region. No matter I go on my own to see how I can be protected and be politically relevant and try to share my inadequacies. Then I come out to say I'm leaving PDP because this was not done. Well, you cannot practically prove it. So the, the reason for the South is to say why he left PDP cannot be justified. It's, you know, it's not just. So I don't want even to. You know very well. It's not. See, because for me, as a governor of a boy state, I will call my three senators, representatives, I call my assembly. Listen, justify. This will say they will give us. You see what he said? Fine. You see, Mr. President, yes. Oh, follow me. House of Reps, follow me. Council Chairman, follow me. Let's go and see Mr. President. Mr. President, my people, you know you told me you will do this, you will do that. Please. The snake that only one mass. So I bought them. Told me. So let them also hear it. Then they will do, go along with you. Not to tell me I have gone to them and they have told me they will do them. Who? What kind of politics is that? A whole me to see president to have a handshake. I to Mr. President to have a handshake. I mean, I mean, I mean. I am. <laughs> yeah. So I don't want to. What did he say? Oh, if no, you give me, I will be able to reply you. Yes. Well, uh, okay, the, P the APC, yes. the ruling party, seems to be the only party just taking away members of the uh, People's Democratic Party. Why don't we hear about the PDP uh, also making efforts to get people from the APC to defect uh, to the PDP? Uh, because some people will say, as the opposition yeah. party, uh, is it that the PDP does not have a strong strategy for attracting people from the ruling party? No, 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 no. Then you see, you are making a mistake. You see, you must understand the political arena, the political of Nigeria. You know, so many people in APC cannot now openly come out and defend the PDP. It's not. You see, you must be very, very careful. For for fear of being hunted for, for fear of them going to EFCC, it's not easy. But I can tell you, you will see what will happen as we move in next year. Towards going to the period where the tenor will expect, you will see so many people will come and at that time, the president will not have anything to do. The party cannot hunt it for anybody again. But if anybody ties it now, then you must have to be, you must be prepared to face the consequences. So it is not easy. It is not easy. So PDP as strategy cannot also come and tell you we want another person to move now. No, no, it is not done. Politically, it's not advisable. It's not advisable. But to tell you whether people will leave the APC to join PDP, certainly yes. Who are they? It is not for us to say. But all you should know, at the appropriate time, you will watch whether people will leave the APC to PDP or not. But we cannot take that risk now. No any type of government, no any type of party, a party that will come out with the gap, they don't care what happens. You will see it openly. And not everybody will be that strong. To say, okay, I'm ready to face you. Not everybody that strong. No, it's not. It's not. The mere fact that we get does not want to do that. Does not mean another person will also do that. No, no, no. No. I can take the to say for our government, if you want to kill me, kill me. APC government, if whatever you want to do, go ahead and do. But not everybody can do that. So I won't because of the weakness of that person to not begin to judge him. No, I would say, look, yes, we agree. Okay. Stay where you are. Okay. At that proper time, is a matter of political strategy. Okay. It's a matter of Okay, Governor Wiki, I, I want to ask a, a quick triple barrel question, so get ready for it. 
Number one will be a lot of people are accusing you for being part of the problem in the PDP. They say you're trying to hijack the party. And there's been a lot of fracas, you know, that have come out of this. Example is the Chinda and uh, uh, Ilumelu case, you know, in the House. You know, what will you say to all of these accusations? Because people keep pointing at you and saying you are part of it. And secondly, yesterday, the PDP had a protest, you know, against Loretta Onoche becoming an INEC commissioner. What's your take on this Loretta Onoche, you know, becoming an INEC commissioner debacle? Quickly. Let, let me tell you, for those who say I'm trying to hijack the party, where is the party for you to hijack? Where is the party for you to hijack? Hijack it to where? Most Nigerians do know there are few of us who stood for the party to survive. If that you stood for the party to survive means hijacking, so be it. So be it. So be it. What are you hijacking the party for? People don't like to say the truth. Can you ask any state? Can you ask, which state has given PDP more food than River State? Since 1999 to 2019, mention one state. I challenge any state. So is that hijacking? If I say we want to support the party, and for the party to be strong, is that hijacking the party? I mean, so nobody, if, if they have given you a particular incident, to show that you want to hijack the party. These are people who cannot, in all ramifications, defend the party. I don't play hide and seek game. Whatever I want, whatever is my belief, my principle, people will know this where I stand. If I, I have come out to say, party, this way you are doing is wrong. Party, this way you are going is wrong. If that means hijacking the party, so be it. I have no apologies to anybody. I do know there has never been a time I have fought the party on anybody. I fought anybody on the party. It is not correct. Certainly not correct. But look, as for the state, we have no other party than this party. And so when you see me talking passionately about the party, because I have no other home to go to, I have no alternative to go to. And so I must do anything to protect this party. I must do anything to defend the party. If that's what people think that you are attacking the party, so be it. But I will not agree those whom I know have alternative where to go to, to destroy the party, and then I have nowhere to go to. For me to fold my heart, certainly not. That will not happen. So it doesn't matter the coloration. Anybody will want to give, I will not, I will not obey that. I will not even listen to it. It does not exist. Those are people who are agents. Take, for example, Take, for example, you heard when Ali Babangida spoke about me. Now you look at Ali Babangida and look at me. And <laughs> tell me, hey, when you say hijack, how? There's no, as you speak today, no Congress, nothing in Niger State. Nothing, nothing. Look at PDB. Look at River State. Look at the programs and projects we're having every day, every day, every day. Who is giving the party more popularity? If I want to hijack the party, is it because I'm trying to popularize the party to show Nigeria what the party can do? To show, look at the example of River State. Look at the example of Akwaibon. So does that mean hijacking of the party? Certainly not. Certainly not. Okay. So nobody should talk about. It. Okay. But now you talk about. You see, the problem with Nigeria we forget so easily. At the time that America was nominated by Mr. President, who was the governor that spoke at first? Who? I was the governor that took on another look, Mr. President, this is why I have said, I wish sure we are going to have a credible election. If we're going to have a credible election, what are the steps you are taking? Based on this step you are taking to appoint our nation, means that we cannot have a credible election. You cannot tell me that you will appoint a card carrying member of a political party to be an electoral umpire that ought to be independent. How independent can that be? Happen to be. How? How can it be? So I was a first governor, not that I was one who spoke up, one of the other thing. Because this is just a belated thing. Everybody knows that. We forget. So the issue of asking me what are my views. My views have been expressed before now. Okay, I was governor. one who raised it and said, You cannot appoint your appointee. If you appoint I mean, uh, your aid, if you appoint your aid, it means that you are not giving us hope 
for any credible election. Well, Governor no, Wiki, let's talk so about we Rivers. Can. Let's talk about Rivers State. Yes. Uh, yes. Yesterday, you were reported in the papers as having commissioned uh, uh, roads and a flyover in the Wuji area of the uh, state. And that reminded me, first, of an article done on the back page of this day newspaper uh, by Dele Momodu in his column Pendulum, in which he said, oh, you were doing so much with roads, with, uh, you know, ensuring peace in the state. But there was a rejoinder by Dakuku Peter side. I'm sure you know him very well. And he accused Adele Momodu of spreading propaganda. And that the only major thing you have done as a governor of River State is to spread poverty and to replicate government house in Port Harcourt in your village. And that uh, you shouldn't leverage on Dele Momodu's uh, reputation uh, to lie to the people that you have been doing a lot. What exactly is the truth? What have you been able to do? What difference what, have you been what, able what, to what, make? What, what, and what, what, has your administration what, what, been affected by the COVID-19 <laughs> pandemic in terms of output, service delivery? <laughs> Ruben, about this, you can see the way, the way I'm laughing. And, uh, you know, ordinarily, ordinarily, there are issues I shouldn't even go and reply, ordinarily. Now, let me make a story. You say Dakuku, you, you know who Dakuku Peter said? He ran an election against me in 2015. He had 100,000 votes. I had 1.1 million votes. So, taking from that background, what do you think will be his reaction? He was commissioner of works. I was chief of staff. We know who is who, we know who did what. But let me come. I didn't remember I have not been my friend. Dele Mamudu has been their friend. I never invited Dele Mamudu to come and see me. Uh, Issa Pontua, may so rest in peace. The Guild of Editors were having their uh, program in Port Harcourt. And from what I heard, it does appear that Issa Pontua was close to the Guild of uh, Editors. So he was invited. And he called me. And that's to tell you the difference between me and some politician. Isa Pontua uh, was a member of the uh, APC, a respected member of them. In fact, he, uh, from what I heard, he was seen as one of the Kabars, as you mean. So he came with Dele Momudu. I thought I didn't invite Dele Momudu with uh, even your chairman, Nduka Obobuna, uh, and the the editor of the Daily Trust, uh, Martin, the Daily Trust, is from whoever. So I hosted them. We were interacting. And I told them, but you, you are the one that was flying uh, our helicopter with them here every time. And you carried out a story against me without even knowing me. Why did you go and find out? Did you go and find out, see what happened, see what didn't happen? So what the man wrote, of course, was an encounter he had with me. When he came with uh, Isa Fontua and then Duka uh, Obobunem. And I never even knew one day that he was writing anything. I don't sponsor people to write something. I don't do that. Because, you see, what has embarrassed the previous administration is what I have done in the state now. And people are asking questions. You mean with this kind of economic crisis in the country and then a governor? Not just a governor the first time, a governor the second time can be doing this. Is it possible? So with all due respect to you, I never one day knew about the Dele Momudu writing anything about me. But I do know that I challenged Dele Momudu in that uh, when, we, when we met with Isa Fontua. Why not come down to River State and say things for yourself? Then you go and report. I saw. If you tell lies, it is you that told the lies. You come down to rivers. I challenged him. And he came and stayed for about one weekend. And he went around and with video. I said, look, don't go anywhere without video. Make sure you video what you saw. Tell the people. That is the only way truth can be told. Because part of the problem we have in this democracy, is the press is part of the problem. If the press is part of the problem, you come here, somebody who has not done anything, you sit in the room in a parlor, and you do a 3D, they carry it, and begin to say giant strike in the television. 
and people will be watching. Now, I said, look, do this. I did it. Now, with all due respect to you, you have been watching us since May 20, in fact, since December last year, bringing people to commission projects, bringing people. Now, if we are telling lies, fabricated propaganda, as the cell that we could put aside, alleged, I bought Fashola, former governor of Lagos State, former governor of Lagos State, to commission the Rebus flyover. That could mean that Fashola came to tell lies to a respected governor and one of the most respected ministers I can tell you of. I brought the minister of sport, Dare. He came and commissioned the Madrid Academy. Dare came and told lies too. I called the minister of agriculture to come and commission the cassava processing plant. The minister and came with the governor of central bank. Two of them came and told lies. I called the minister of health. Come and commission the modern child hospital and lay foundation for the Dominicanly Cancer and Cardiovascular Diagnostic Center. The minister also came and told lies. These are APC people. They all came here and told lies. Okay. Okay, Governor. No, no, hold on. I call fire me. Can you fire me? The 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 the, the, the chairman of Governor's Forum from APC, one of the most respected APC members. He came and commissioned the Rumuji market. He told lies. I called, I called the Sultan of Sokoto, who came, his eminence, who came and commissioned the traditional rulers secretary. He told lies. I called the owner of Ife, Onu of Ife, to come and commission the cultural center. He told he came and told lies. Everybody had been coming, telling lies, telling lies. The only truth is the one. Akuku said, no, but you let us even go to straight to the mother. He said, most of the projects, they did it. I wish him good luck. Look at the politics in Nigeria. How many people, I assume you don't know consider, how many people, previous administrations have awarded contracts, and then a new government comes to continue to even complete it, then you should commend such administration. Mm. Everybody comes, abandons everything. In 2015, when I came, I said, government is a continuum. I said so, that all those projects, contracts are awarded by the people of the that have impact or that will impact on the lives of our people and the economy, I will continue with it. It does not matter that whoever the contractor may be, mm. all the contractors that awarded the job to, I continue with them and I pay them. Mm. As for example, from a Rebisi down to a little one, what if we call Tassamadi Road, they awarded to ROCC, ask somebody they paid. And when I came, how much did I pay to RCC? I paid over 17 billion to them. Every month, 1 billion through uh, irrevocable family payment order. Action of the road that they awarded to one of their friends in Abia State, Ozoba, Obogoro, Rumalumene Road. I came. I said, look, go and do the job. Get your payment. I'm not interested. But the one that Celeste Nome awarded, Forces Avenue, to one of the guys from Opopo, asked him from his own uh, local government. They canceled it, did not even do it until they left office. He said they completed the uh, Ogoni, Opopo, and Donny Unity Road. They have to remain 20%. How can people tell lies like this? What kind of character do we have? Okay, assume it's 20%. Assume it's 20%. Are you not happy that I came? To make sure you go home, which you couldn't have, since you were born. Since you were born, they said Obobo was uh, created maybe 150 years ago, as they said. They've never seen road in their life. And to you, you have done it to the many 20%. And I came. Okay. I didn't want to suffer you. Okay. I said, no. Okay, okay Your Excellency. Okay. Your Excellency, I mean, it's never in doubt that, you know, you have done all of this. And uh, let me even add to you, is the, what is it called, uh, the Nigerian Law School that you have, you know, put yourself forward to build and the groundbreaking of that has started. Commendations here and there. And, you know, you, like you said, that people might be telling lies. But, Your Excellency, I'm sure you agree with me that this is not a lie, what I'm about to say. 43.7% un unemployment rate in your state is not a lie. Because you know why we're seeing it? We're seeing it in the security situation in your state. 
and the high incidence of cultism and crimes across board. 43.7%. What are you doing to change that? I'm sure you agree with me that's not a lie. The NBC can't lie about you have, that. You have, you have joined them to tell the lies. You have joined them to tell the lies. What is this? Now look at the index. I don't know where you get the index. Check. The security zone in any state. River State is one of the best today. What is the security situation? He said, coffee. What is coffee? So look at the crisis then with IPOP and Abia State. Look at what happened in Nemo State. We have, and we have boundaries. And then, as somebody, a government that's very proactive, we should follow our hand and allow this miscarriage to enter into River State and keep policemen and soldiers. Of, and then, and you will assume me as a good governor. So, important of coffee means that there is no security in your state. You impose coffee to make sure there is no security crisis. Nation, if you are saying the kidnapping and the rest. So, in Bruno today, in all those states where you have this high level of insecurity, that what is the unemployment rate then? If you are judging based on your own assessment, which I said is not correct. No, it's the NBC it's that says that, not me. MBS. It's the MBS. MBS. It's the National please, Bureau of Statistics please, please, that says that. It's not please, me. Please, That's their us, figure. Let us, let us, please, 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 please. You see these agencies of government and the be careful. I don't want to go into details. I don't want to begin to make accusations against people. It's, oh, this man is always accusing people. I've been in this, I've been in this uh, system for years. I don't want to tell you about NBC statistics or NBC statistics. Okay, let, let me ask you one question. When you say creating of employment, assuming today you have 10 flyovers going on in reverse state construction, does that create employment? Does it? It does. It does? But okay. Now, take for example, if you have one flyover, 50 people are employed. Take for example, pass it by 10 flyovers, well, what would it be? I'm asking you a question. 50 into one flavor times 10. Oh, what will it be? 50 times 10, that'll be 500. That'll be 500 jobs. But, but Your I'm Excellency, coming, that's not a knock-on effect coming, of job creation. I'm coming, really. sir. I'm coming. This is we, are talking, we are being practical now. Yeah. Now, that is direct. That is direct. That is direct. On 10 flavors, not other routes. Now, what is the indirect effect of 500 people being employed? But, but how much? How many people will Okay, what I'm saying, but but, but your excellency, your excellency, the indirect I, can be about I, I, one th five hundred to one thousand people. I was thinking, no, but, no, no. but the coming. question I'd like to I ask you thinking. is this: How much are you paying people that are working on that flyover project? Are you paying them the minimum wage? Because what you pay them to matters a great deal, and they are there's mostly no contractors, body, and they will end it at the period of time, and they'll leave. There's nobody in River State that's paid less than the minimum wage. Not one. Not one. Not one. You see, you see, the problem we have, I just gave you an example. So that to fought the so-called beauty of statistics. You know, people think you can use government agency to bring down the performance or what you may call the, 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 the rising profile but, but, of individual but, or state. But, but, or but state. Your Excellency, if you will let me speak, that same government <laughs> agency acknowledged the fact that Anambra State, for instance, had unemployment rate of over 30%, and it went down over the years. So if you do well, that same government agency will report. In Anambra case, please, please. as they reduce please, unemployment, please. the MBC calculated about, it and showed when, it. When we are talking about, with all due respect to you, that means you will not following up issues. When we are talking about states, the states that ought to be promoted, you, you think that river states should be promoted by the federal government? You well, think so? Governor Wike, they we have good things. They should say good things about our about the state government. Well, Did Governor you know Wike. what they're talking about? Do you know what they're talking about? I have just given you a practical example. I said 10 flyover, 50, 50 per flyover, 500. We are not talking about those who will be supplying sand. We are not talking about the indirect effect of it. And then you now multiply. In how many years? Think how many people have you employed or the job you have created? I don't you have to be practical. It don't be a theoretical. NBC said this. Bureau of Studies said this. I agree. Now, to 
to make sure that to tell you that I'm all right. Go to the health sector. What is going on? Go to education. What is going on? Are they employing people? Yes or no? How do, how do they come about the services? Who gave them? Go Governor Wiki, how many jobs are you creating per month in River State? I'd like to know. How many, what's the number of jobs you're creating per month? Real quickly. How many jobs are you creating per month in River if, State? If you say, listen, listen, if you say, how many jobs am I creating well, per month? Well, Governor Wiki, if, uh, see, you Governor Wiki, to, if I, I may come in here, if I may come in here, because we're running out of time. We have just uh, yeah. about a minute to go, Governor. I'd like to ask you okay. your take on the rearrest of Nam Dekano, who is from the south southern part of the country, uh, the southeastern well, part of well, the country. For What's me, your take? For as me, a lawyer, yeah, for me, it, uh, it does not matter the differences my state had with uh, Nam Dekano. No matter the difference, what we believe that rule of law must be followed, due process must be followed for his prosecution. It must, and also. To allay the fears of Nigerians that look, we are not doing this, we're not prosecuting because he comes from a particular section. There are bandits. You must also make provision to say all these people who have been causing security crisis in Nigeria are also prosecuted. Let us not make a hula badu about the prosecution of uh, uh, Namde Kano. I don't believe in his principle. I've come out and I've said it, you cannot annex my state to be your own, but that does not mean that you will not allow the law to take its uh, course. The same way you have arrested Nandikano, she will also be the same way all of that whom you have known and should be also be brought to book to face the wrath of the of the law. It, it, wow. You cannot discriminate. You cannot say wow. because Nandikano is from a particular area, let us do this. Well, Everything point well made, must well. be applied to all other people, the bandits, the well. mayor's allies. You have to also well. apply the same uh, principle. Point well that made, Governor take. Wike, and uh, thank you very much for this opportunity to have this conversation with you on the morning show. Thank you, thank you very thank much you. indeed.